I'm Rosalind Saville and for 40 years I have been a curator of Serve Porcelain. Thanks to Madame de Pompadour, in 1756 the Serve Porcelain factory was founded finally. It moved from Vincennes to Serve, a, a beautiful new site um, in between Paris and Versailles and so Louis XV could take a great interest in it. And Duplessis, as the main designer, was instructed to create fabulous new shapes to celebrate the move and to give it a, a great kickstart as a fabulous royal enterprise. And this is one of the shapes that he devised. It's absolutely ingenious. It's a jug, a very small jug, and a basin. And he's managed to make the watery imagery for the water that would be um, used in the basin look like lily pads jetting off from this central star-like formation. And then within the lily pads you have more fountains of water and settling on the top of the fountain a little sprays of flowers. It's just, it's just ingenious. I love it. Whatever side, way you look at it, you've got this marvellous sense of the natural world leaping into a basin for use indoors. And the jug too has the same patterning. If you look under the spout, the same lily pattern is shooting up from the bottom and the rim just takes the angle of the leafiness, watery scrolls here and back to this exquisitely beautiful handle. And the pink ground colour encircles little white areas where the flowers trail in and out of these gilt edge scrolls all the way around the piece. Now pink is one of the most famous colours that was made at the factory. It was invented probably in 1758 when a painter called Zoué was paid for ingeniously devising the colour. And because that was at the time that Madame de Pompadour was at the height of her powers, people have tended to call it Rose Pompadour. But I want to assure you that it was never called that in the 18th century. That's just a magical 19th century romanticism to connect this colour um, with the mistress of Louis XV. In fact, I believe that the pink was more popular with the King Louis than it was with his mistress, Madame de Pompadour, and that we're safer just calling it simply Rose. What would this piece have been for? It seems such a strange assemblage, something we're not used to using today. Well, this would have been used on the smartest and most glamorous of dressing tables during the ritual of the toilette. You would have been pampered, you would have had your hair done, your cosmetics, you'd been prepared for the day, and it would have taken a good part of the morning you'd have been starvingly hungry and you'd have been served coffee or tea in special little cups, sometimes, sometimes with covers to stop um, hair powder going in and contaminating the drink and keeping it warm for you, or even with little um, soup bowls, again with lids to keep the soup warm. And you would have eaten bread and butter or toast with your soup and got sticky fingers, and here you are, you would have been able to pour the water into your basin, rinse your fingers like a plumbed-in hand basin, and keep going through the ritual of the toilette without needing to leave the dressing table and disappear into the bathroom. And it's so rare to see an example of this model. Very, very few exist. I suspect because they perhaps weren't as practical as some of the larger jugs and basins that were made. And therefore to see one here in the Garden Museum is the most amazing treat. And it's worth a visit just to look at the extraordinary detailing that Serve Porcelain was capable of making.